Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Deepti Alapati. I'm a neonatologist at AI DuPont, and uh, my research interest has been on uh, newborn lung disease, uh, specifically bronchopulmonary dysplasia and pulmonary hypertension, which are two of the most common um, diseases that affect uh, preterm infants and um, have um, long-lasting um, issues into childhood and even into adults. So I started off my research using animal models when I was a fellow, and um, and more um, recently I've um, gained more um, you know technical expertise. I guess I can say in about using um, cutting edge technologies for lung related research, um, and now I'm trying to. Uh, build upon some of the research that I had uh, previously done to further the, uh, to identify self-specific therapeutic targets that could potentially uh, be um, clinically translated in the future. So um, this, uh, some the work that I'll be presenting um, today is uh, funded by the COBRI pilot grant, um, which I received last year and it's renewed this year. Um, as well. So just a brief overview for um, for those of you who um, are not very familiar with bronchopulmonary dysplasia. It's a major public health problem. It um, is associated with significantly prolonged NICU uh, length of stay, and these baby up uh, that affects about 50% of preterm infants. Um, and amongst and some of this about there's also a high mortality associated with it. And amongst those that do survive, they have frequent um, readmissions um, during the first two years of life. They're very prone to infections and asthma and related problems. And a lot of recent studies um, have shown that um, adolescents and young adults who are born preterm and who have bronchopulmonary dysplasia continue to have persistent um, abnormal lung function and are at risk for um, emphysema, at risk for infection-related um, lung diseases, as well as smoking-related COPD into um, adulthood. So it's a major public health problem that spans um, across all ages. Um, so this so a lot of research has been going on for like the last uh, few decades of uh, using animal models to study what are the mechanisms that lead to uh, BPD or bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And um, most of these models have used hyperoxia-induced lung injury as an experimental, as a, as a model. And that's because most of the babies who do have bronchopulmonary dysplasia do get treated with high amounts of oxygen and oxygen-induced toxicity. Um, is um, known to be an, a, a risk factor uh, for bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And in most of these, so, uh, so hyperoxia has been um, pretty much like the classical model that's been used. And most of these studies have also used the entire, um, the whole lung to evaluate the, um, the underlying mechanisms. So the limitation of using um, this kind of a model and this um, uh, is that we do know that in the clinical scenario, bronchopulmonary dysplasia is caused by multifactorial um, causes, um, and they include prenatal factors and postnatal factors. Um, so often there's a prenatal factor or a prenatal insult, either from a genetic or from an environmental insult that um, leads to preterm labor and the babies are born premature. So there's some degree of uh, fetal priming that's going on in the prenatal period as, as a result of these. And then these babies who are then born premature are then exposed to external environmental um, insults postnatally, either from oxygen, mechanical ventilation, or even infections, nutrition, um, and more recently when antibiotics are being implicated. So drug primary dysplasia is really like multifactorial. And therefore, by using models, animal models that only use one factor, may not completely replicate the the entire like the mechanisms in BPD. Um, and also by using, and then we do know that the lung is like architecturally very complex. Like there are about 40 different 
cell types that have been identified so far, and there's more and more being identified, and 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 each cell type has its own um, significant um, function and response to injury. So it's act so it makes more. Um, uh, it might it will be more impactful if we study like the certain important cell types that we think may be contributing rather than studying all of that as a whole. So on the so with this um, uh, with uh, so for these reasons, um, I um, my objective was to use like a model that. Uh, that to at least some degree recapitulates both a prenatal timing and a postnatal um, insult, and then study uh, certain important cell types um, in the lung. So the model that I have used is a model that was um, that was um, developed uh, by Dr. Zubera Gai, who is uh, also a neonatologist from Jefferson with an interest in chorea amyonitis. Um, so he had developed a model where um, we inject um, lipopolysaccharide into the amniotic sac of the um, fetal rats, um, and so that induces um, um, that as, as a model to simulate uh, chorioamnionitis. And chorioamnionitis is one of the most common identifiable reasons for preterm labor. So, um, so I um, so I asked if I can use this. Uh, this model of preterm um, of prenatal lung priming induced by LPS, and then combine it with postnatal hyperoxia that I had previously um, worked with, and combining these two, and then using this as a model to recapitulate some of the multifactorial um, um, in the multifactorial um, um, uh, multi multifactorial nature of bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And also what I did is instead of studying the entire lung as a single um, uh, point, I sorted some of the important cell types um, in the lung, namely the epithelial cells, the endothelial immune cells, and the mesenchymal cells. Again, like these are the four uh, broad categories of the pulmonary cells, and there are subcategories within it. So I asked if I could uh, in at uh, begin to analyze um, these main cell types um, differentially and and then um, evaluate further. So I am using uh, so this is work that I'm that's currently ongoing. So I'm using uh, fluorescent activated cell sorting um, to isolate these cells for gene expression analysis and also using immunohistochemistry um, to um, identify individual cell types. Uh, by immunostaining and then analyzing some uh, basic proliferative or apoptotic indices. So this is just some uh, re uh, preliminary data that I have. Um, that uh, um, so I've done, I've isolated immune cells. Um, so far I've done, um, an, an, uh, analyzed for two groups. So the blue represents like the control that babies who are not infected and who are exposed and who did not get oxygen exposed or these are rats who did not get oxygen exposure. And then the red represents uh, fetal rats who were infected prenatally and exposed to oxygen postnatally. And um, we did um, we did microarray for these. Um, and it sh and then um, again, I, I only, um, and then we did differential gene expression. And it showed that there were genes um, that were upregulator that were involved in the processes related to basically like connective tissue replacement and um, related to um, some innate um, immunity and um, migration of eosinophils and uh, monocytes. On, on the other hand, there were a lot of down-regulated genes that were enriched in processes involved in B cell and T cell function. And there was also interestingly some genes that were that are associated with um, angiogenesis. So, um, so these are uh, and so these are some um, interesting findings that uh, previously had only been shown using like whole lung homogenates evaluating um, cytokines. But um, this is pretty much um, the first that I am aware of, especially looking at immune cells uh, within the lung. Um, I've also been working um, 
trying to um, see if I can use um, RNA-C next generation um, sequencing analysis for doing these uh, analysis for, um, for doing this analysis. And for that, I use the epithelial cell component. And this is some preliminary data showing how the different, like the gene expressions are, like the different groups, uh, the epithelial cells from the different environmental, um, con uh, from the different uh, experimental conditions um, are, 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 have different um, genes expressed. And on uh, quick, on analyzing some of the genes, one of the genes that popped up was uh, connective tissue growth factor. And this is a gene that I had first started my research with, um, that I have seen that in babies who die with BPD, this connective tissue growth factor was significantly increased um, in their lungs. And, um, and again, using a hyperoxia model alone, when I inhibited CDGF using like systemic monoclonal um, um, and, uh, monoclonal antibody um, against CDGF, there was uh, improvement in the, lung, in the BPD phenotype. So, uh, um, so I asked, um, so it showed that the CDGF was actually significantly increased in the epithelium. And this um, is of, um, and this, uh, I'm working now to see if I can um, specifically inhibit um, or knock down CDGF in the epithelial cells instead of um, doing like a systemic administration because CDGF is required for um, normal physiological function and other organs and even other cell types within the lung. So, um, and for that, um, I am uh, I'm using some, I'm trying to work um, with uh, CRISPR-Cas9, uh, which is a gene editing um, technique that has been, that has recently gained a lot of um, um, that has been developing very recently. And some work that I did recently using CRISPR-Cas9 showed that when I can, when I deliver CRISPR-Cas9 into the airway, it specifically, specifically targets the, um, the epithelium, the airway, as well as the alveolar epithelium. And using um, a model of surfactant protein um, disease, which is, which results in an interstitial lung disease, I show that using CDGF to knock down a particular gene um, actually improves the lung uh, morphology by just targeting the, that gene and the epithelial cells. So, um, so, and so now I, um, so some of the work that I'm currently trying to do is use um, more recent advancements of CRISPR-Cas9 to um, knock down CDGF in the pulmonary epithelium. Um, to see if that um, can be a viable option to prevent some of, um, or at least attenuate some of the, um, the abnormal phenotypes that we see in bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So, yep, that's the work that I'm currently doing, and I'm open to any questions, new ideas. <laughs>